Oh, well, good morning, guys. Um, yes, I got these big Mammo Jambo headphones on because my other set snapped right up here. They broke. And uh, these ones are a little big, but uh, they're nice. They're expensive. Uh, what I wanted to talk about today, you guys, in this video is what's been going on out west. And there's several things that have been going on out west. And but what I wanted to talk about in this video is the water crisis. Now, I am asking in this video that for those of you that live out west to please weigh in in the comment section down below, because as you guys know, you can't believe everything you see or read on the Internet, no matter how much research you do. And I do a lot of research on the Internet, and uh, I always come across you know, different sources that I'm not familiar with. Um, however, sources that I am familiar with and those that I am not are all saying the same thing. So I'm asking you guys if this is indeed true. I have been hearing reports that the drought out west is the worst in history. It is uh, something they can't compare to going back in records. They said it's never been this bad. Uh, one source even said it's, it's worse than it's been in something like 1,200 years. I don't know how they know that. I'm going back that far. But I wrote down some notes here of what is being said. And it said in August, which is just next month, um, just right around the corner, the government will declare a water emergency due to levels at Lake Mead. And we'll be making water cuts to Arizona, New Mexico, and Nevada, and California. Representatives from seven western states reliant on the Colorado River signed the drought contingency plan two years ago. In doing so, they plan to cut water delivery to the states that I mentioned until the year 2026. That's crazy. Also, the power plants, because they're hydro plants, won't be able to deliver electricity due to severe water levels. So they're going to start cutting these different states, various regions that these hydro plants um, deliver electricity, megawatt power to, they're going to start cutting them. So farmers out there are already being axed. And they're not getting the water for the crops and the levels like at Lake Mead, Lake Powell, the Oroville Dam, all these different uh, Gunnison Re Reservoir in Utah. All these are super, super low. And one expert, um, I forget his name, claims that in order for these water levels in the entire region of the United States to get back up to where they were at full pool would take 10 years. And he said, there's no way that there's going to be enough rainfall in the next decade to bring these reservoirs and this uh, water problem back to normal. A decade of not just uh, rain, but snow melt. Because you guys out West rely on the snow melt because that's like your reserve. And then in the summer, when it melts off and runs down the mountains and feeds these water tributaries, which ultimately drain into these reservoirs that hold the water throughout the summer to supply everybody that needs it. The problem is, you guys, is the desert southwest and the west. Um, that's all a desert region. And there's not enough water to supply the demand. I mean, when I watch videos about this problem out west, I see huge green lush uh, golf courses watering their, their uh, course. People having sprinklers on their lawns and everybody wants a swimming pool and filling up their swimming pools. And then you've got the farmers that want it. And then you've got the reservations, the Native Americans that are saying that the, the salmon numbers are being depleted. So everybody has got a take in it and fighting for the water 
because uh, they all need it and want it for different reasons and there's just not enough of it to go around and then you when you compile hot dry weather you know in a drought with that well then everybody out there is going to stand to lose so what i don't understand is that they have a lot of development um, going on out west because the population is growing a lot of people are moving out west but what is the draw if it is very, very hot, very, very dry, and you got the problems with drought, lack of water, um, like I said, the high temperatures, you've got the risk of earthquakes. Um, I just don't know why people would want to live in such a place. Because basically the country is divided in half. The whole western half of the country is dry the whole eastern side is wet but we always have water here in the in the east i mean i live right next to lake erie which is one of five of the great lakes new york state neighbors two of the great uh, lakes lake erie and lake ontario and the state of michigan neighbors three it's the only state that has three great lakes all the way around it so the, the Great Lakes are the largest freshwater supply on planet Earth. There is no amount of fresh water larger than the Great Lakes. And it's what brings us all the snow in the wintertime. And, that, and that's why this area is always green, always lush, and we never dry out and turn brown and everything die and there's no water. We will always have water here in the east. So. I don't know what people living out West are going to do. What are you going to do? If you live out West, if you are in these States that are affected by the severe drought and the shortage of water and the problems that are coming down the pike shortly with not only not, not being able to get water, but also they're not going to be delivering power to some of you out West, if not the majority of you, because these levels just continue to drop for God knows how long, because this is just going to keep going on for the foreseeable future. And I'm sure that those of you that live out West are paying attention to this and watching this more closely, because I'm sure it's in your news more than it is on this side of the country, because a lot of people on this side of the country aren't even aware that this is going on. Because a lot of people don't pay attention until there's a problem. Then all of a sudden, everybody pays attention. But I'm telling you right now, you guys, if it were me and I was living out in this, you know, out there where it's being effect, affected by this problem, uh, I would seriously be considering leaving because you cannot live without water. You can't do it. And, you know, and I've talked on my channel throughout the years and the different channels I've had where I've talked about preparedness and, and uh, being prepared for anything that could come down the line. Well, this one's the most serious, you know, because the West is really spread out. You got to have a car to drive because everything is so far. Things aren't really close to where you can get by without a vehicle out West. You've got to have a vehicle. That's another, you know, bad thing to rely on. Um, gasoline is another thing that's not guaranteed forever. And uh, nothing is. So the problem in this country, you guys, is as Americans, and this is a problem in this country, you know, I'm American, I admit it, in this country, we, we take advantage of things and just assume it's always going to be there. But when people don't work with the earth and conserve and live in nature in harmony, and this doesn't matter if you're in the middle of the wilderness or if you're in the middle of the desert. If you're in the jungle, you must live in nature in harmony. If you reap more than what's being produced, you're going to go without. You know, like I say, where water doesn't flow, a garden doesn't grow, and only the hot winds blow. You know, and that's what the West is. 
it's extremely hot out there. The temperatures have been rising. And uh, yesterday, <clears throat> as I was watching videos on this drought, I saw a popular YouTuber that I'm subscribed to, and I watch her channel. And you're probably going to know who I'm talking about. And um, I think her and her sister just went in together to buy a property in Death Valley. She lives in Nevada and bought a property in Death Valley as just like a second location to go to. But why would you buy something that's in a region of the West where it's like the hottest temps recorded? Why would you go from the frying pan into the fire? I mean, is she aware of the problems that are going on out there? And it's like in the middle of nowhere. It looks like a moonscape around this place. It is so freaking hot where this house, this little tiny house is that they have to put aluminum foil on the windows to reflect the sunlight. And so when you're inside the house, because the sunlight is not letting any, uh, or the foil is not letting any sunlight come in through the windows, you have no idea what time of day it is. It could be in the middle of the afternoon, but because there's foil on the windows, if you turn the lights off, it'd be pitch black inside the house. Why in the hell would anybody want to live like that? Where it's so hot, so dry, and the wind blows the dust if you go outside. To me, that'd be like living on the moon. Only with extreme temperatures. You know, it's these kind of people, you guys, that are unfortunately are going to basically invest in their own death. These people are going to be sacrificed because of their foolishness and not taking the problem serious. You know, they're eventually, this goes on long enough, and it looks like it will, eventually there's going to be a mass exodus of people going in the opposite direction, whereas before everybody was going out west, now everyone's going to be coming back east because it's not going to be sustainable out there. You're not going to have the water to wash your cars. You're not going to be able to fill your swimming pools. You're not going to be able to water any lawn. Having a lawn, forget it. You'd be lucky if you have water to drink. You know, these people that, that abuse the water and waste it and let it get on the pavement and then uh, evaporate and just waste it and take it for granted that it's always going to be there. Well, the day has come to where that's not going to be anymore. There's been too much abuse on the limitations of the water out there. It's no wonder the levels are so low with the influx of people building homes, the population rising, everybody is fighting for the water, Las Vegas, LA, Phoenix, all these places fighting for water. And then the ones that are irresponsible with it, that just compiles the problem. But people out there are going to wish they had water to drink, to bathe. Not for a swimming pool or to wash your car. But that's not the only problem. Those hydro dams get low enough, like they're saying, is going to start happening next month. To where there won't be enough water to supply the electricity to you guys. So anyway, without making this video too long, I wanted to touch on this subject. I'll probably be talking about it more in the future as this story develops. And the problems out there continue to worsen. But for those of you that live out there, what are your plans? What are you going to do? Because this is a serious problem. This is unprecedented. This has never been to these levels before, according to what I've been uh, researching on the internet, listening to all kinds of different experts, reading all kinds of different articles, and uh, but you guys know best because you live out there. So that's why I'm saying feel free to weigh in and let me know what you think, what you've been hearing. Um, is this true about the electricity and cutting off the water and have you ever seen it this bad living out there and is it the worst it's ever been because i know there's been 
times before when these reservoirs, these various ones have dropped to different levels and went below full pool. But it's, I guess, at the lowest it's ever been, and it's, con- and it's forecasted to go even lower yet. And that's why next month the government's going to declare a water emergency. But I'll tell you what, you guys, if the West dries up and just burns and there's no water, I don't know how you guys are going to live out there. I don't know what you're going to do. You can't live without water. I don't see anything other than everyone's going to be forced to move east. I don't know. Weigh in, you guys. Let me know what you think. I appreciate you watching. And like I said, I will touch on this subject more in the future. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.